Okay, welcome to Free in Three. And we're going to be talking a little bit about scripture today, about spiritual warfare, and about uh, keeping our mind in tune with the intents and purposes and character of the Creator God. And that's pretty challenging these days with all the Marine Corps talk about latrines and who gets an umbrella and who doesn't. So let's try to focus there for just a minute, and I'll draw your attention to a passage of Scripture, actually two of them that are rarely put together because they're in two different books of the New Testament. One is Ephesians 6 and the armor of God, and the second is uh, what my home pastor, uh, Pastor Tom Camp, refers to as the Elite Eight. Have you ever heard of the Elite Eight? It's a memory tool for Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, which lists off eight different character qualities that we should think about. And I was thinking about them the other day, along with the spiritual armor of God. And while there isn't a one-to-one -one comparison, there are some remarkable similarities. Both books were written by Saul. As you know, the, this guy Saul, named after Israel's first king, was quite a persecutor of the church. And then he became a Christ follower after a dramatic conversion on Damascus Road from Syria, believe it or not, and became the Apostle Paul. He wrote both of these books, uh, Ephesians and uh, Philippians. But here are, the, here are the attributes mentioned in the, the Elite Eight of Philippians 4. Verse 8, um, whatever is true and pure and lovely and uh, honorable and right, uh, if there's anything admirable, anything excellent, uh, anything praiseworthy to think about these things. Eight attributes there, I believe. True, pure, right, honorable, admirable, excellent, worthy of praise. <laughs> Am I missing one? The true? Let me do it again. True, pure lovely, admirable, excellent, worthy of praise, right, and honorable. There we go. There's the eight. Okay, so how do we relate these to the armor of God? The armor of God being, of course, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, and the gospel of peace. Well, <laughs> they aren't put side by side in the same book, so it's kind of tricky to do. But if you think about whatever is true, doesn't that fit with the sword of the spirit and the word of truth? Yeah, it probably also fits with uh, um, the belt of truth, because the belt actually has the word truth in it. So truth probably permeates all of the uh, spiritual armor. Um, but uh, what about what is pure and lovely and right? I think of that as the breastplate of righteousness, perhaps. Or um, So truth fits with both the, uh, the belt of truth and with the sword of the spirit. Uh, what about with the feet? shod or uh, sandaled with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Well, we have uh, peace mentioned as well. The peace of God will guard our hearts and minds as we uh, think on these praiseworthy um, attributes. And yet also we think of all of those attributes are grounded in the person and work and character of Jesus Christ himself, who is actually our armor as well. I think Luther wrote the lyrics, we're not the right man on our side. Our striving would be losing. Actually, our striving would probably be what? More like slaughtered, right? So the uh, the armor of God. Uh, what about the shield of faith? I think our problem today is a lot of times we think of faith as an end in itself, like faith itself has some virtue. But faith is a trust, and trust begs the question of what we're trusting in. So our trust is only as good as the one we're trusting in, and that is Jesus. And Jesus, of course, is... Uh, the fruit of the Spirit, he is love. He is the light of the world. He is what is true, pure, right, honorable, <laughs> admirable, excellent, and worthy of praise. He is the one that we have our faith in. He is the one that the word of truth reveals. He is our helmet of salvation. He is our righteousness. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the good news, the gospel of peace as well. So how to get free in three? Well, you might want to meditate on Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, and the armor of God in Ephesians 6 and realize our our warfare is not against personalities, uh, media, 
uh, uh, different people who agree with us or don't agree with us and uh, argumentative uh, subjects. Our warfare is against spiritual principalities and powers that exalt themselves against God, against his gospel, against his son. And, and our al allies really are those who um, are fellow travelers, fellow Christ followers, those that have Jesus as their unrivaled first love. So I hope you get free and free today. And uh, thank you for my friend Gator. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. That's my friend Gator. He's quite a musician, and uh, I appreciate that song he wrote for me. Um, and always enjoy jamming with him. So I hope you enjoy Free and Three and uh, get a chance to share it widely with others. And God bless you today. Bye.